All right, so here we got the PK275, PK Ripper. I'm down here at Phoenix Bike Company because my buddy Sean came up on this purple chain. I'm kind of stoked I want to put that on there. But the reason I'm here is this absolute black new cog that I'm going to throw on the back. It's an 18 tooth cog. There it is there. Pretty cool upgrade but i don't have the parts in my house or the tools to install this really cool detailing so i can get it really cool detailing on this super light um they're made in the uk kind of a cool cool thing but so you use a cog instead of a free wheel there's a cog here that's not a free will, that's a cassette hub. So when you want to do the upgrade, you got to put a cog, not a free will, if you have a cassette hub. So you have to get rid of the, you have to undo this here, which is a retaining bolt. And you have to have some tools, like a whip, to get to it. So also my bike is dirty because I ride it. So we got Sean in the house. What Sean. up? How you guys? Tell your friends hi. Hi guys. <laughs> Good to see you again. So, what do you need to know when changing out a cassette, like a cog on a cassette? First, kind of you touched on it just to make sure that it is a cog, not a free will. So, as you can see, if any, if you have a lock ring, as far as that goes, it's going to be a cog, not a free will which is your monster quad fat quad beast mode pk ripper essentially for the most part it's almost every se that has disc brakes typically don't hold me to that as far as it goes it could be a couple exceptions um but for the most part every se that has disc brakes runs a cog not a not a free will the best thing to do too what i do is i tell people go to the se website absolutely look at your bike look at your bike year if it's a previous year go to the bottom of the page specifications art it'll go it'll have archive go to your bike look at specifications and it'll tell you cassette hub or cog. Or, or cog or free will or free will that's the easiest way to find out yep absolutely all right that is a great place if you have any questions as far as se bikes go it's like details on them they they do a phenomenal job of educating what's on the bike and how it comes spec. I mean, I use it. Yeah. You know, on some of the older stuff, I mean, it's it's the best place to go. So what's the first thing you do? Take off the uh, chain tensioners and the pegs? Yes, sir. You were doing any feeble grains? I do not. Man, my bike is filthy. I'm almost embarrassed, but not. Phoenix Bike Company, how may I help you? Uh, at the moment, I do not have any. You're welcome.
so close. Is that something you have to do to get the wheel off? So the way these are, you have to loosen these bolts because if you go to try and pull it out with the disc brakes, it'll actually hit right here. Hold that there and you can show people. You can see it on the back. So this goes up a little bit as far as these two because you can see that these swivel. So typically when it's set, you're about there. So trying to come up, sometimes you it'll it'll go depending on what size rotor you have. Um, but on this, you have to remove this bolt and then just pull it up a little bit so that you can clear your rotor that hits right there as far as pulling the wheel off. So once you pull that out, loosen this one, you can lift that up, it slides right off. This is your chain whip. I'm just gonna wrap around here, because otherwise, if you go to try and take this off, if I can get it in there. When you go to try and take this cog off, it's just when you go to put your tool on it, it's just gonna spin backwards. So you need this guy to wrap around to actually hold it when you go to spin it, because otherwise, it's just gonna free wheel. And these guys are a little bit of a pain just because they're not recessed like this guy so how flat these are you can see how this one's a little bit thicker here so the tool actually sits a little bit better on this to actually take it on and off just a little upgrade a little bit you know machined a little different quality but i mean i mean you've been running this thing since you got the bike and it's I've never had a problem. I'm just doing it because uh, this will run a little bit easier. Gary. So this is a little bit of a battle trying to get this tool on here. No, this isn't technically the right way to do it, but it doesn't clear with the chain. So it's the only way I can do it. When in doubt, figure it out. <laughs> I had to like like screw with it on the last one too, because like the chain's so thick. Yeah. And like, there's really no other tool. Come on.
How many teeth are on this? Let's see. One, <coughs> two, three, four, five, seven teeth. Sean guessed 17. I wonder how many it really is. What do you think it is, Sean? 17. It's 17. Well, uh, it's a, it was an educated guess. It also says 17 on uh, it. Oh, it does it? Yeah. Didn't even see that. Maybe it was hidden because of the dirt. Dick. I guess I can. I could have looked at it, but. So. I also did this, I think, last weekend. Or the weekend before. My follow up question then, Sean. Is this something the average person needs to do for bicycle maintenance? Clean your bike? Or. Again, jerk. Uh. Ah. <laughs> 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 Yes, you should clean your bike. No, Isaac doesn't clean his bike very well. Um, <laughs> should the average person need to remove their cog for general maintenance? Not for general maintenance, no. Um, I mean, the only thing you really want to do is just as far as the drivetrain goes, is just kind of, you can take a rag like once, you know, just wipe down in between here. Uh -huh. um, just make sure it doesn't gunk up with a bunch of stuff because like the more, the more stuff that gets stuck in your chain on your cogs, things like that the way it'll actually wear out your cogs and your chain quicker than if it if it's cleaner i guess if you will because yeah. the more grime that builds up it also starts it'll start wanting to cake up here and then when it cakes up there it gets into your driver and it causes a little bit you know bigger problems versus you know here and there just kind of but taking it off no it's not a bad idea to check the like this lock ring here and there as far as it being tight but you don't have to take it off just a little bit of grease metal on metal always grease Is it any one of those teeth gone? I literally don't know anything about cogs, so is, just place it on there. Is it so? One? There's only one way. Like on this one, they're pretty much all the same size. Yeah. On here, there are some that are a little bit smaller and a bigger one, depending on the brand of cog that you get. But for the most part, you can't put it on wrong <clears throat> as long as it no, fits. No, exactly. If it does have, you know, the little bit bigger one and the smaller one, it will only go on one way. Is there a specified like teeth or anything like that for these cogs? So there are, so depending on the splines on it, like as far as all the SE stuff, any, as far as the teeth go that are compatible, is any like single speed Shimano splined cog okay. will work. And then just stating the obvious because now you're tightening you don't need the whip because it's going the opposite direction exactly because it's going into the drive side that's it now we put it back together it's pretty simple but i mean the only thing is it does require a couple specialty tools any bike shop should technically have them they're pretty common
right back in. Now we're gonna break my chain, chain breaker. And put a purple chain on there just because why not match? Kind of weird, right? Is this still the original one? It's the original chain. Kind of weird. I thought maybe I was crazy. I don't see a master link on there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought it was crazy. Most of them. Uh, I've never seen a bike come without a master link. Yeah, like all the, all the other ones because they have the S1s on them. They don't have. Yeah, maybe there is and we just didn't see it. But if both of us didn't see it. Well, that one might not have the clip though. This this one, well, this one doesn't need it because it works a little differently. It's not the traditional style. I wonder if this is going to be. the shortest it can be. I want to see where it's at with your chain tensioners. Because with these you can't run them all the way forward because otherwise your chain tensioners won't reach. The only reason I know that is because that's what happened with my bike last weekend. Yeah, because if I take a link out, it's going to be, it'll be too short. You won't be able to get your chain off. Half length would go, huh? 
Yeah. You won't be able to run these in. Mm. And it's like literally a hair. Like that's all the way forward. And it's literally. Yeah, but look, it's still. Yeah, plus clearance wise. Yeah. Still further forward than where you're. I mean, this is where you're sitting before. I mean, it's not much further forward, but a little. Alright. Because you were in that one before. Explain chain tensioners again while you're doing it. <clears throat> sure. So this, this little guy right here, is your chain tensioner. Kind of screwing this in will pull your wheel back, and then you can kind of play with it. You can also the reason why I tilted his bike up is so that I can look down the center of his tire and look down the center. So kind of this view right it's here, so that here. you can line the gap up where Isaac's fingers are. So I usually go off of the center stripe and if your seat post clamp is straight try and nail it dead center with the gap in your seat post clamp because that's the should be the center of your frame. That way otherwise you'll feel it walking here and there like if you're riding you'll kind of feel it pull one way or another if your tire isn't straight. Plus if your wheel is a little bit out of true and it wobbles it'll probably rub on either side of your frame. These, the other good thing about chain tension is that you don't have to screw your axle nuts down so tight to where you have a chance of stripping them because otherwise it's pulling forward. You can actually snug these up and then snug, you know, pretty tight obviously because it's your wheel. But then you don't have to worry about it, it pulling forward on you.
And that's going to stay on there, huh? Yep. All right. We got some purple nail polish. I'm not surprised. I got a purple bike, man. Touch up. <laughs> In all fairness, it's not mine, it's my wife's. But now it's kind of mine. <clears throat> Snug this guy down. Phoenix. Or maybe Phoenix. I don't know what to call it anymore. Is it an LA Ripper? Is it a Phoenix Ripper? I'm gonna clean. I'm gonna wipe, dust it down a little bit. My bike is so dirty, you guys. It's embarrassing. Ride your shit though. Hell yeah. Ride it and then clean it. <laughs> I'll ride it. I forget the clean it part. But you know, it, it happens. I've only ridden my bike a couple times and you should see how dirty it is. All right, so you say that's about it? That's a bit. I'm gonna put the brake back where it was. As far as retention, that just make sure everything doesn't rub. But as far as changing out the cog, that's it. Pretty, pretty simple, All right. pretty quick. If they have questions, they can call you? Absolutely, or message me either way. Phoenix Bike Company. That's Sean. That's me. All right, Sean's done with the bike. I cleaned it up barely, but I felt guilty for showing you guys my bike all super dusty. So we're gonna go try it out now. It has an 18 tooth cog instead of 17, so should pedal a little bit easier. Might be interesting to see that. So we'll hold that. Let's go try it out. Karen, here you go. That new is gonna add extra horsepower too. Ridiculous.
Hold on, T. Is that what they're called, though? G turns? G turns where you end up right and go out. Oh, uh, like backwards? Thanks, dude. I love it. Of course. 